Oh, hi. Don't mind me, I'm just cutting up some lithium for another cesium run. And yes, I already know what you are thinking. It is getting boring. This is my fifth video about the synthesis and the redistillation of cesium. But there's a reason for this video, trust me. And I won't let you sit through all of the stuff you have already seen. If you are interested in how this preparation works, you can check out my cesium playlist. First I wanted to show Super Ultra Thanks Mum what it looks like to cut lithium since he had never seen it before. Cutting lithium is a lot harder compared to sodium or potassium, but you're still able to cut it with a knife when using a little pressure. And the second reason for this video is that I'm trying to increase the yield. My yield has never been better than 50%, so let's see if we can squeeze a little bit more out of this synthesis. All of the cesium produced in this video will be used for my collaboration with Elias from Elias Experiments. If you have ideas for reactions involving cesium that you always wanted to see, write me a comment and we will try to make it happen. Elias already had a lot of great suggestions involving liquid oxygen, nitric acid and more. If you don't want to miss this upcoming video, consider subscribing to Elias or my channel. We would appreciate it a lot. As you can see, I already made a good amount of cesium. These are 10 vials containing 2 milliliters of cesium each, so 4 grams of cesium per vial. But we wanted a little bit more cesium for smaller scale experiments. So I'm going to make some cesium today that I'm not going to fill into a vial, but rather I will use a Schlenk flask or a Schlenk tube like this one. These tubes are made for the work under a night gas atmosphere. So you would connect um, this here to a Schlenk line. A Schlenk line is just a line where you have inert gas and vacuum. You can switch between those two. And for example, if you wanted to take out something from this under inert gas, you would apply uh, inert gas pressure here. And through this rubber stopper, it's a septum, you would use, for example, a transfer cannula out of stainless steel to transfer your chemical. Um, what I'm going to do is to distill the cesium in here, use a glass stopper to stop it, uh, fill it with argon, and afterwards we can fill it with minerals oil and take out the certain amount of cesium we will need for a smaller scale experiment. But as you can see, the connection on the top here is an NS14 glass ground joint and I'm not going to be able to connect it to my reaction vessel because this is a KF flange. So the first thing is uh, what, I'm, what I have to do is to make a connector to connect this KF flange to this NS14 glass ground joint. What I had lying around is one of these. This is an NS14 joint and I will um, cut it right here, or rather um, break it right here. And I already had this one lying around. This is a self-made KF flange. And I'm going to melt it off right here, blow a small hole in there, and connect this piece like this, so I can connect the Schlenk flask to my reaction vessel. Yeah, good enough. The piece earlier was way too short to hold on to it properly. So this is a longer piece. It's from a broken uh, still I made. I'm going to fuse it here, blow a hole in it and connect it to the NS14 glass ground joint. I am again removing some of the excess glass here. Now I'm going to blow a hole in it. Here 
Here you can see the finished adapter connecting the Schlenk flask to my reaction vessel. Like I said, I won't talk about how the whole setup works, since I already made several videos about it. But of course I'm going to show you some shots of the cesium dripping into the Schlenk flask. I just think it looks neat. I still, for the love of God, can't figure out the correct lighting setup to capture the beautiful color of cesium. What I thought was interesting is that you can see the vibrations caused by the vacuum pump on the surface of the cesium. It almost looks like one of those resonance patterns formed by sand when exposed to sound waves. The cesium production is now running for about an hour and the yield is already higher than it has ever been but I'm trying to push the 35 milliliter mark here which would give us a yield of around 80% and that would be awesome so I'm letting it run for a little bit longer. The cesium drip rate has slowed down significantly, there are maybe one drop every 30 seconds but I'm trying to get it to 35 milliliters. One thing I'm doing is cooling the condenser right here so I don't risk distilling over any lithium. Uh, lithium has a melting point of around 180 degrees Celsius and by keeping this cool I can at least make sure that no lithium gets into my receiving flask. Okay, we are not quite at 35 milliliters, almost, but at this point I'm going to stop the distillation because there's almost no cesium coming over, maybe one drop every two or three minutes. And what I'm going to do next is use my argon bottle right here. It is argon 5.0, which means it's 99.999% pure, and I'm going to fill the system with argon, so I'm able to remove the Schlenk flask here and then I'm going to close it up with a glass ground stopper and then I'm going to weigh it to, to determine the yield. It should be around, I don't know, maybe 75 to 80 percent. What you can see here is a pressure relief valve and it's connected into my argon line. The reason for this valve is that if I just connect my argon bottle to the system, the pressure is way too high, it will just blow my joints and I risk um, getting cesium everywhere. So this valve can be tuned and it's tuned to a slight overpressure um, so I don't risk sucking in any air, but the pressure isn't too high. Here you can see the pressure relief valve working. So I'm now going to turn off the vacuum line and then I'm going to slowly open the argon line to flush the system with argon. Now that there is no vacuum in the apparatus anymore, I will disconnect the Schlenk flask and due to the argon flowing through the system, there, isn't, there won't be any oxygen getting into my Schlenk flask. I don't, it doesn't matter if oxygen is getting into my apparatus here, my reaction vessel, because I'm going to clean it out afterwards anyways. So right now let's disconnect this here and close it with a glass stopper.
I definitely should have adjusted the pressure relief valve better. It would be optimal to use a bubbler to adjust the pressure. The problem here was that there was still a little bit of cesium at the glass joint and that got blown out by the overpressure. This is a glass stopper I greased generously. Normally you wouldn't use that much grease on a glass ground joint, but I wanted to be um, very um, closely sealed and I don't care if there's a little bit of grease getting into my flask. So let's determine the yield. I've weighed out the Schlenk flask and also the glass stopper before uh, starting the synthesis. So I can just subtract that weigh afterwards. And the Schlenk flask with the stopper and the cesium weighs 169.14 grams. Let's calculate the yield. We used 100 grams of cesium chloride for the synthesis. This corresponds to 0.594 mole, which would also be our theoretical yield of cesium. After subtracting the weight of the Schlenk flask and the glass stopper, I was left with 71.29 grams of cesium, which corresponds to 0.536 mole. Doing the math on that, we get a yield of around 90%, which is absolutely insane compared to my previous runs. Just as an additional information, the lithium in this reaction was used in a 1.5 molar excess. The cesium isn't very pure, but it doesn't have to be for what it will be used for. Due to it not being pure, I was surprised to see crystals forming in the cesium when it cooled down. It is hard to see or capture it on camera because the walls are dirty, but you can barely see the characteristic dendrites forming. I've tried to capture them on camera so you can have a good look at them, but I wasn't successful. I have to save to get myself a proper camera with a manual focus and polarizing filter. Let's talk about what I did to increase the yield so dramatically. Normally I was worried to let the reaction run for too long, because it happened a few times that lithium got into my receiving flask, and that's a real problem, because the lithium reacts with the glass and you risk cracking it. So normally lithium shouldn't be able to evaporate at these pressures and temperatures. Um, the pressure when I'm distilling the cesium is around 0 0.0 milli 2 millibars or 2 pascal. But what I think happened is that the cesium boiling, especially when it boiled um, vigorously, when the temperature was higher, carried over uh, the lithium and that's the way it got into my receiving flask. So what I did this time is that I left the temperature at a yeah, moderate um, level, around 590 degrees Celsius, and waited until most of the cesium got distilled over. And afterwards I raised the temperature gradually, first to 610, and afterwards the highest temperature was 650 degrees Celsius. And I've left the reaction running for approximately one hour. And as you can see, the yield is great, 90% compared to 50%, which was my highest number I ever reached, is just awesome. It saves so much uh, cesium chloride. And yeah, I will use this technique, the temperature gradient, for my future preparations of cesium, because it just saves so much um, of the cesium chloride, which isn't um, cheap. I really hope you enjoyed watching today's video. I know, it was nothing new, but for me it was a huge success to increase the yield to 90%. If you enjoyed watching this video, consider subscribing. And apparently I'm supposed to tell people to also click the bell icon. And I want to thank my patrons. Thank you for supporting me and my passion. I greatly appreciate it. But also a huge thank you to all my normal subscribers. You are an awesome community. You had great ideas for the Stern Gerlach experiment and some offered their help to machine metal parts. I'm seriously touched by that. Other than that, thank you a lot for watching.